Now I'd like to introduce to you our two speakers for the 1 p.m. slot, and that is Liz Romero, who is currently an instructional designer at George Brown College. She earned her PhD in instructional systems and emerging technologies at the Pennsylvania State University, and she is interested in creating interactive e-learning experiences that have developed critical thinking skills Also, Maria Glass, uh, who is a full-time professor with George Brown College in Toronto. She holds her uh, TESOL certificate, a PhD in linguistics, and master's in applied linguistics. Her research interests include uh, pragmatics, interpersonal, and intercultural inter 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 communication, and second language acquisition. Okay. Thank you very much. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. So again, I am Maria and Liz. We are going to uh, share with you our experience, um, some work that we have done. So our agenda for today is, first of all, tell you what LMS we use, which is Blackboard. We're going to talk about this. The guiding principles of uh, our ideas. Uh, we have a, co a course development checklist that we developed, and we'd like to share that with you. Our methodology. And our exam, some examples from our English, um, I'm sorry, School of English as a Second Language uh, from George Brown. So we have some examples, some samples to show you. And then some ideas of, in terms of planning and our checklist for success. So Liz was, is going to conduct the whole presentation and I'm going to jump in uh, from time to time. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm Liz Romero, instructional designer for e-learning and teaching innovation at George Brown College. And uh, today we will share with you what we call a practical method to create online courses. And that practical method, we have called it the story approach. It is a way to create online courses based on, an, on a story. For us, every course can tell a story. Um, first, we will uh, focus, when we create an online course, course, we focus in the delivery system. What is that uh, technology that will bring the instruction to the student? And that is, in our case, Blackboard. But we know that there are many uh, learning management tools out there. We have Moodle, we have Sky, we have Desire to Learn, and a range of learning management systems. But that is our starting point. What is our learning management system and what are the tools in this system that we can use to create online courses? And what we have observed, and mainly Liz, uh, Liz is that we can create anything in any uh, LMS. So it's a matter of creativity because there will be uh, possibilities and tools. All these uh, systems offer some tools that can help us. So, in, oh, sorry. So, in terms of mm -hmm. our guiding principles, I'm not going to use this anymore. Okay. Okay. So, when we start um, developing or creating, thinking, designing an online course, we have these guiding principles that guide our work, like umbrella principles. Uh, we said, okay, we'll focus in our delivery system. That is the foundation, the learning management system. Then we want the instruction to be outcome-based learning. We want students to do things instead of knowing things. We want them to be in action, to do, to apply knowledge and skills. And I'm going to jump in here because our, our school, our, uh, our college, uh, uses uh, the outcome-based learning as its foundation, right? So. Uh, yes, we believe that our courses, our online material, should uh, have an outcome or something the students can do uh, at the end. But we are also following here our mandate and our uh, what our college expects us to follow to use the OBL uh, principles. And that's why we have adopted mainly the learning by doing model, where the students apply knowledge and skills. And we also have adopted a problem-based learning model where students face scenarios, face problems, and they solve the problems 
with the with the team with the group of students. And uh, it's interesting to observe that we created it in uh, our school of English as a second language. But then later on, Liz, as instructional designer, uh, developed some courses for the nursing program. Following the same principles, we were able to observe that there are so many things we can do uh, online, so many possibilities, and you did that with the nursing program, right? And also with the culinary school, we have developed courses following the story of Roger. So we also give priority to thinking about the strategies, thinking about the approach, and then thinking about the tools. The tools go after. We first figure out what do we want to do, and then we look for the tools that help us achieve what we want. Um, also, we want to support the instructional um, goals, the institutional goals. We come from the college, and the college focus in providing students the skills that they need for to be successful in the marketplace. So we try to make the instructional context as close as possible at the performance context of the students to what students will find when they get out of school and they find themselves out there in the world. Uh, we also try to follow the universal design learning principles. Are you familiar with, uh, universal, with universal design? The main principles are uh, multiple means of representation, multiple means of action and expression, and multiple means of engagement. And when we show you some examples of our tasks online, you will see how these tasks offer multiple ways or multiple means of representation, of action or expression and engagement. So uh, you can see the tenets of universal design in our uh, tasks. And then we said, okay, how do we want our courses to look? How do we want students to feel in this course, in this environment? We said we want the course to be consistent. We don't want students, when they come to a particular mo module, to find something different. We know that when the, the design is consistent, that diminish the cognitive load of students which at the same time promotes learning. So we design our modules with the same components. Every module starts with an introduction. That introduction has a brief overview of what as is going to happen in this module. And then the objective, the resources they will need for this module, and also the activities that they will um, do in this module. We have the content, sorry, we have the content, and then we end every model with the summary. What did you do in this model? And we make the bridge for next module. What's going to happen in next module? And a checklist. Did you complete this, this, that? Just to get the students to have control of their own learning. What have been done? So we're giving some control to students. We have observed that, especially in our school, because we have uh, students from all over the world, some are more savvy uh, in terms of using uh, uh, technology, and some are not as savvy. Or s I had one student once who had never used a computer these days. So uh, when we say quiet design, we are also trying to uh, uh, increase accessibility because for those who are very savvy understand how to navigate the, any tool, things are okay, things are easy. But those who are not as uh, savvy, they should not have to t try and decipher what they have to do. So if everything follows the same, uh, same structure, and when they have the second module, they will think, okay, I know what I have to do. I don't have to go through that process of deciphering what's, what do I have to do now. So it's, uh, when you say the cognitive load is, uh, is um, 
uh, is not as much because it, the person has a task. The person does not have to decipher what uh, to do. Right. We also um, want the students to be to find the course, the instruction easy, straightforward, and at the level where they are. The course that we're going to show you was a beginner level, so the language has to be at that level. Do you, are you familiar with the Canadian language benchmarks? That's what we, are, we deal with ESL. So we, uh, in Canada, we have some benchmarks, and they are they are used across the country. So uh, it would be equivalent to a, a CLB three, which means very elementary. So, so just so you understand what uh, what kind of language user uh, is our uh, target here. Uh, we also wanted our courses to be supportive, to provide examples, guidelines, checklists, and a sense of community for the students, uh, to minimize the effort provide all the inputs that they need. Because teachers provide the inputs. With those inputs, students create outputs with the inputs and also with tools that we provide. Uh, we also wanted a learning conductive space, supporting strategies, and um, providing the strategies that will help them achieve the objectives. Um, accessible, providing all the tools within the delivery system within Blackboard. So the students didn't need to go out of Blackboard to get the tools needed to achieve the objectives. It's interesting because there are the tools that we use that are offered uh, on the internet somewhere, but we were always uh, careful to have the tool available on Blackboard. So uh, students don't have to go outside of Blackboard and look for the specific tools. And we already showed you that. Right, and in some, in some instances, it's fine to go out of Blackboard, but it depends on the audience. For our audience, uh, a beginner students, we didn't want to expose students getting out of Blackboard and being lost in the, in the internet. So we wanted also to be flexible. We wanted students, pay, pay to students to be supported by the, their peers. We created um, a blog for problems, issues, and concern from students to students. And in these blogs, what students do, if they have any question, they post the question. And another classmate will respond the question. And we found out that when students, sometimes when they don't have the teacher present, they are more willing to ask those questions that they might not ask the, to the teacher for intimidation because they might think I should know that. So when they are among peers, they are more willing to take risks and say and ask what they don't know, even though they might think it's not a good question or it's a stupid question. So the method that we use to develop our online courses, we first Look at the situation. Look at the uh, actual situation. What is happening with this course? Because when we work, when we create online courses, and these are usually face-to-face -face courses who need to be delivered online. So we ask, why are we doing this? That's the question. Why are we um, transforming this face-to-face -face course in an online course? In, in some cases, we are just uh, offering uh, an online component to a class, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, class. So it depends on the situation, depends on the program, it depends on many, many factors. Um, some of the situations that we have found are that there are few opportunities to practice knowledge and skills. Um, students do not participate much in class, so we want the online component to promote participation. Uh, students have different learning styles, and in a class period, a professor cannot address all the learning styles. So in the online environment, we have more resources to address the, um, different learning styles. Uh, other professors say that they do not have a time is limited to cover the content that they need to cover, and they need to increase accessibility. As far as the ESL environment is concerned, um, our 
most important uh, uh, focus here, uh, our interest is in creating uh, a, a opportunities for the students to experiment the language, to use language, to, uh, to complete some tasks, uh, but in a um, safe environment, but uh, not as controlled as something that we have in the classroom. And are not as, as so uh, not controlled as in the outside world. So it is a perfect venue for you to uh, create situations, create scenarios for students to play with the language and use language as they improve it. So once we know what is needed, we ask the next question. Looking at the objectives of the course, how do we do to embed this objective in an authentic environment, to engage students, to promote learning by doing, and also to give control to the students. And to answer that question, we usually brainstorm in groups. Brainstorm and look what others are doing. Look what happens in conferences, uh, what has been published, uh, imagination. So a lot of, we do big groups meeting and we get many ideas on what to do. Uh, and then once we have ideas, we decide on a path based on the outcomes we create story. We create story. Uh, and then in the component of the story, we have the teacher. What the teacher is going to provide to those students, what the students are going to do, and what tools are they going to use. The storyline is very important uh, when we think in terms of ESL students. I'm always bringing uh, the whole thing to my own uh, environment because that's what I know. Uh, when we create a storyline, we contextualize the task. And when we contextualize and give the students a mission, they have, uh, they have a purpose. Uh, and they have a mission. They have tasks to complete. It's not something, oh, I just have to complete a boring reading activity or just complete something else that I write something for my teacher. No, I have a task, a mini task, which uh, uh, will be put together with other, uh, other mini tasks, and at the end I have a whole thing. I have a big, uh, um, a big product to showcase. Then we are offering the students uh, the opportunity to showcase their work, and they love it. They love it, they start with that very, useful uh, competition, and which can be healthy at times. But a story create, creates this context for the student to want to be part of it. So once we finish the course, uh, the course is pilot-tested and used. We evaluate, um, we evaluate the achievement of the students. How did the students do with this course? We also ask the students, what did they like? what they, they didn't like and why. What would they like to be uh, different next time? And we also ask the teachers. The teacher is a good resource because they know when the students struggle in particular uh, section. And maybe the students are struggling with instruction. Maybe instruction are not clear enough. So the teacher is a great source of feedback to improve subsequent um, uh, revision of the course. Yeah. So this is our experience and the, my experience and with Liz, and uh, that's the example we are going to show to you. So um, maybe I should yes. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about this. So we have, uh, what was our situation? Uh, we were making many changes to our program. Uh, we were be uh, in the process of becoming a uh, post-secondary school instead of just a uh, uh, short vision kind of school, so things were happening and we became an EAP uh, course, which, is, which means English for Academic Purposes as well. So many things changed and we wanted to uh, add an online component to our already well-established face-to-face uh, classes. So we wanted to increase accessibility uh, we understand the situation of our students. Uh, they, uh, the 
domestic students work, so they have to be uh, able to uh, do their work at uh, odd hours. And also we wanted to increase uh, um, opportunities to reinforce their knowledge or practice whatever they learn. So the solution we, uh, we uh, for the solution component, as Liz said, we have to brainstorm, brainstorm, observe what we have, our syllabus, what we are covering, the level of our students, what uh, we want them to produce at the end. All those things are discussed in the brainstorming uh, meeting. And uh, there is one element that needs to be taken into consideration. For uh, language, we deal with four skills that are integrated listening, speaking, reading, and writing. We, and if we are to really say that we are uh, focusing on language in its uh, multi-dimension aspect, we have to remember that there are four skills. And what, how can we do this? How can we make sure that students are using the four skills? And then we can create the storylines. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. So this is the tool that we use to create storyline. We start with an empty chair. So, and we know that story has a beginning, it has characters, has a plot or sequence or many outcomes, has solution, has task, and has, a fun, uh, has an end. In this case, we had the final plot. So we start with this empty shell, and then we start for an idea to develop. We start with just brainstorm, and once we decide on an idea, that idea goes through multiple um, modifications until we both are satisfied with how the idea, how the story flows. So in this case, we started the, the story with a pair of journalists. Yes, so what we do is for level three, for the whole session, uh, students will play the role of of journalists. So we select a few neighborhoods of Toronto, some traditional neighborhoods, and we pair them up, pair the students up, and they have to pick one neighborhood because they are going, as journalists, they are going to write articles about that neighborhood. And we are going to publish, that's a, the final product here is uh, an article on that neighborhood that is published uh, in our magazine. So we have a magazine, online magazine, and, and they understand that everything that they produce weekly will end up in that magazine. So the beginning is uh, pairing the students up. Uh, they, they understand that they will uh, be journalists and they choose one, one neighborhood and then here for these many outcomes, here we have tasks. Every week they have a task, and they have to go up there and complete that task. Sometimes that task, going back to the universal design principles, the multi-representation, uh, various uh, means of representation. So students have a task, and they have sometimes to go to the neighborhood, talk with people, they have to uh, research on the internet. They have to go to a library. So there are many ways they can collect information and then put things together and publish. And uh, weekly, they produce something, they uh, load that something on their shell on Blackboard, and uh, this, the teacher monitors their work and helps them with uh, some editing, and you will see some editing there, and helping the students to, to work on their material. Um, I need to mention that stories is a powerful tool for teaching, and we all like to read stories, and we all like to be part of the stories. So the students in the, with this method, they are part of the stories. The, the stories. They need to apply knowledge and skills to be able to move, to be part of the story and to move to the end of the story. Yes. Okay, so let's So move. once we have, um, yeah. Move on. Yeah, pass. Mm -hmm. Next one. So once we have the main components of the story, the next two is the client table. 
So we know that the main component, the first component of the story is to choose an area. So then we, we ask ourselves for each one of the components of the stories, what do teachers need to provide to, stu to the students to be able to achieve this first component of the story? And the next question is, what do students need to produce with this input? And what tools do they need to produce? For example, to choose an area, we, we provided a list of 20 neighborhoods. Um, they, and they pair themselves and pick a neighborhood using a blackboard space, a group space, where they went into the group, the, the space, selected the um, department, and selected the, okay. the neighborhood. And then the next components to describe the place, we gave them um, guidelines, the components of that introduction. Um, and they had to produce a paragraph and they publish it in the magazine space, which was a good thing. But, uh, by the way, when we, uh, when we have, we create those tools, we always model. Uh, we have to keep in mind that our students are language learners, right? So we have to model what it, uh, what it means to, uh, to, ri to write to a counselor. For example, what, did, what is a counselor? <laughs> For example, well, there are many steps so each task has many, many tasks because uh, we have this couple, this couple of things for, for the students. And um, another thing that is important to uh, highlight is that when we were creating the course, we had many, uh, many components here, many, many tasks. But the teachers that use this course, they decide on well, which components they want to use because it's very likely they won't have time for everything. So they pick and choose the components that they like the most. And uh, for example, I know that we, we have more than these, but I know that some of them did not, uh, did not choose this, uh, preferred only uh, to use the interview, contacting locals. Uh, so some of them changed, uh, worked on the history of the neighborhood as opposed to something else. But at least the teachers who are using our online course can decide. After all, it's their class. They, have, they do whatever they feel more comfortable with. Okay. So the key of this planning tool, which is a basic thing, is to have all the components of the story in the first column. And then we ask the question, what do I need to provide students to help them create this component of the story? What information, what uh, um, guidelines, checklists? And then we ask another question, what do they need to do to produce with this information? And what tools do they need to produce, to produce the task? I think it's time now to show them some of the students' yes. work, right? So bear with me a little bit, yeah. Okay, I think it is here, yes. So one thing that the teachers decided to do was uh, after they have done this many times, they selected the best uh, work and they show the students some of the work to the, to the new students who are just entering the level three. So the idea is to, um, to introduce the, the, the work, but also to create that uh, competitive feeling. Okay, I want to do it and it's going to be better than what I've seen. And, and they, they end up with some fantastic work. So this is uh, welcome to level three. So we start like this. And we usually have this start here. So we have the welcome to the course, the, uh, the role of the instructor, this course, so etc. We always have the netiquette even though uh, students don't really pay attention to that, but we, we want to have it registered, <laughs> just in case. And uh, score, blah, 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 blah. So this is the stuff that we need to, to, to set the tone. 
So these, these components basically all the pre-instructional activities, things that the students need to know before getting into instruction. Uh, the tools, the um, software, the plugins, etc. Everything before the instruction. Okay. So uh, this is marked. So uh, yes, they are marked. Uh, they they know that it's a percentage of their mark. It's uh, forty percent of their final grade. Blah blah blah. Okay. So. Do you want to show anything else here? Less known for schedule, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, you want to edit both? Then weekly modules. Again, uh, the students, uh, the, the teachers make changes. So this is the introduction. Let me see what it is. Okay, no more here supposed to do and we always have the objectives we always have uh, let them know what they are supposed to do can you see well from that? yeah so what they're supposed to do and always they have the, the post on the magazine right so choosing a neighborhood so we hear, we model, we tell them what they're expected to do. So step one, find a partner. Uh, step two, this is what you have to do. And these are the, Toronto, the neighborhoods. It's fascinating to see uh, students who are new to Toronto or are international students going to uh, the neighborhoods and learning about the, the city. So, and they, they love it. At the end, uh, they always say that their neighborhood is the best, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. So they are, they really. And they feel so proud. Uh, for example, uh, Koreatown, if it's a Korean student, to go to learn about Koreatown, Chinatown, to, to learn about the little Portugal. Oh, it's uh, a big thing for them. So, um, so as you can see, we always have this table of contents uh, here. Every single week, they will have the same structure. That's what we talked about when we said that we <laughs> consistency and quiet design. Because they don't have to decipher things anymore. They don't have to look for anything. They know how it's going to be presented. They just have to follow the order. So they, they are happy with that. Now, tasks, task number two. Do they know the task number one? So they know the task number two. And here is the wiki where we keep the magazine. Since week one, we have the magazine there for them. Because this is a course that has already been, uh, it has already finished, you, it's going to be complete. So, uh, Anna, who is the teacher, has this. Do not add other people's work. Do not delete other people's work. We have to be very careful with that because it's a wiki within uh, Blackboard. Let me show you uh, some of the other modules before uh, we, I show you the, their work. Liz, would you like to add something? No. So as you can see here, for, for level three, we created eight weeks, right? So eight big tasks that are, are, the, uh, that are comprised of several mini tasks. But our teachers, our level three teachers, decided not to use all of them. They were too much. The, 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 the whole purpose of the whole work would be too, too, too big for them. So they decided on these uh, tasks. They just love doing this. Because the idea is create an, an ad. Promote your neighborhood. Uh, they, they love doing that. So, uh, uh, they end, uh, ended up with, what, only five. And that's lots of work. <laughs> Just something. Description. So again, 
the introduction, you have your table of contents here. Introduction, this is what you're going to do in week two. These are the objectives, these, uh, and here are your evaluation activities, how you're going to be evaluated. Um, now, look at this. See if you can go to module three. We always have a checklist at the end of the week. It's a way of letting the students uh, check whether they have done everything that they were supposed to do. One of the principles of universal design. So uh, they are engaged, they are in charge, they can self-regulate, they can uh, see how, how much they have done and they see if they are behind or not. So it's a... Uh, it's uh, an interesting tool. It is also a metacognitive tool because it makes students reflect and think about what they have done and what needs to be done. Because when they come to this at the, at the end of the module and they don't check one of the components, it might mean that they need to go back and review that. Yep. So, going back to module three. The navigation here, this is not my course, so. Uh, again, same structure, objectives, evaluation, tasks. History of the neighborhood. So uh, you have one big task, which is divided into small tasks. It uh, turns the whole uh, activity as a more manageable uh, task. So if you, if you break down the whole thing into smaller ones. And as you all know, the cut and paste thing is a problem and it's a huge problem for us in our uh, school because we are, they come from different countries with different ideas of what plagiarism is. So uh, we always have to be on top of that. It's hard, very hard, as you know. Uh, again, the same thing, the task, see if you can go to the next, next. Uh, module. And I'll make some changes here. Okay, this is a good one. So the task here is to interview a resident. So they have to go there. So we teach them so many things here. We teach them that uh, if we take a picture of someone, we have to ask for permission. For us to videotape uh, a conversation with someone, we have to ask for permission. We have to, ha to have that permission on paper, signed. So we tell them that, we show them that we have our own uh, a form that the person has to complete and they start to understand, they start to understand certain things about our culture here, right? Things that are very likely quite different from what they have to do. So the task, always an example from a previous uh, Okay, again, photographs. Ask the interviewees if they will gi would give you permission. So always try to give them that, uh, that understanding of how things work here. So, sorry I'm kind of going quickly, but just want to show you yeah, that's a task. So, this is one that they like very much. Okay, that's the advertisement, objectives, everything, same structure. I really like the idea of giving the students options. Uh, they do not have to videotape something. They do not have to do one thing. Uh, uh, this, 
will ensure that students with different uh, skills or even students who have different abilities as far as using technology, they can produce something. They don't feel as intimidated, right? And uh, let me see if we can see this. And yes, we have lots of problems with technology. <laughs> Okay, so one, one last thought is that this, this approach, this story approach, can be applied to any subject matter. I have applied the story approach to nursing, where a nurse works in a local hospital and every week she has a patient with a health condition, she has to collect data, come up with treatments, etc. Et I have also used it in culinary, where a chef is working in the Caribbean and the whole hospital. So every course can be a story. That's my last thought. <laughs> so that's what we came here to do, to <laughs> show you uh, what we have developed. Uh, we are happy to answer any questions, uh, should you have any. Uh, let me just get to just direct the question. Yes. Okay. All right. So if you have any questions. Are there any questions? Yeah. Is that 
Well, uh, we, we do talk with them. We do, uh, uh, we help them teach uh, what the issues are, how to approach. It's an opportunity for, for us to teach people how our students, how to approach someone on the street. Uh, they have to uh, identify themselves that they are students, uh, uh, from students, and uh, they are doing some work for their uh, class, and they would like to talk with them. Would you give us permission? So we we have to teach them everything that they have to do, and they are supposed to do this in pairs, and they are all uh, under uh, adults, so we don't have to deal with uh, underage people. So we sort of cover all areas. But there isn't an extra for the training that go through. Not for this. Not for this, because this is a class uh, a class activity. It's not uh, something we are conducting for. Uh, it's not that. No. Yeah. Yes. One one problem that not only an unexpected person with this type of designs about the content. Yes. So did you ask me what well, I'm also faculty what is the content? How can I integrate the content into this course? What is your perception? Uh, from uh, I'm, I'm going to speak from the uh, the school of English as a second language, right? So we are dealing with language. We want the students to use language, to produce language. So what we do is we have our outcomes, the outcomes we want to, uh, the students to produce at the end of that uh, course. So when we are uh, creating a, a, an online course, we make sure that those outcomes are addressed. So for example, if a student has to go for an interview, interview someone, so uh, in level three, they learn how to introduce themselves, how to approach someone. So, the outcomes of the content, the, the, the thing about language is that our outcomes is the use of language, right? So it's a little bit different. But uh, we are using, um, making sure that the students have the, the classroom, the content, they learn how to do something before they go online and produce <laughs> something else. I think in the case of um, uh, Liz produced something for uh, nursing and for hospitality. So how do you deal with content in uh, that situation? That's a good question. We don't have much content in this course. What we do a language and 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 <laughs> and This is a hybrid course. And this is the practical component of that hybrid course. So a lot of content happens in the classroom. For nursing, it was a fully online course. So we had content, we had readings, we had everything there. Um, for culinary, also a fully online course, we had content, we had books, so the content was embedded. In here, content was in the classroom. Yes, because it, it's, it's a hybrid one, yeah. Okay, so unfortunately we run out of time for the session, so um, let's thank our speakers for a really wonderful presentation.